Hey guys, welcome to Boning Soul. Okay, so a uh, quick little video today about um, the importance of, of finger pressure on your string, okay? Um, so we're all told that we're supposed to have a nice clean release. Uh, you know, there's different types of hooks, that kind of thing, right? So, um, you know, what we really want is something that has a good clean release this way, right? What we don't wanna do is we don't wanna be pushing finger pressure up, down, this way. Now, theoretically, we have to, oh, I can't remember what the exact ratio is, right? But most of the pulling is done by your middle finger. Um, I think like 60 or 60% 60 or 50% and then like 40% for the top one and then like 10% or whatever for, for the bottom. I can't remember what the ratio is. But um, what we're not supposed to do is obviously put too much pressure on the lower one because the more pressure you're putting on that string, the longer pressure or contact you have along that string that, that's influencing uh, how much pressure is on the on the string now i'm terrible at it my <laughs> the, my biggest calluses are actually on my my uh, ring finger my last finger i put way too much pressure on the bottom but um it's something i'm trying to work on now what i want to show you guys though is uh the differences in uh how finger pressure up or down can actually affect limb timing right because these are supposed to the limbs are supposed to come back uh at the same time they're supposed to come back through space right along this across across space basically uh, same time kind of like uh, cam timing on a, on a on a compound bow now you can really affect the tune you're basically changing the tiller right uh, one one limb is flexing more than the other limb uh, you, know, you might be pulling more on the bottom than on the top that kind of thing and that really messes you up it messes you up with accuracy it messes you up with uh, with with uh, with flight characteristics how smooth um, the arrow comes off the string off the bow if you're gonna get any balance any kind of anything kind of weird so um, <clears throat> I've got kind of clear sky here. I'm gonna try and show the best best I can here for this. Um, it sometimes it's kind of hard to see the movements of, um, <clears throat> of of the limb tips. Now I'm gonna show you on this right here for pulling. Right here's what I'm talking about. I'm trying to get my arm out of the way here. Obviously I'm not a full draw, but if we have too much pressure on the bottom finger, we're doing this. See that? Okay. See how the see how that string. Kind of kicks out more this way for my for my middle finger versus like this right if we're trying to do too much this way so when we do that we're changing we're changing tiller okay different different pressure up and down on the string so ideally right i'm gonna kind of squat down here and uh against the sky you can probably see the limb tip a little bit better right let's do this so and it's very subtle it's kind of hard to convey in a video, but if we're a draw right here, right? Now, I'm gonna put a lot of bottom pressure on, okay? See that upper limb? Move forward, forward, forward. Well, that means the bottom limb is actually moving backwards, backward, if I'm putting too much bottom pressure on. Same with if I'm doing too much top pressure, right? Okay, back, back, back. The top limb is moving back, and it means I'm pushing more. I'm putting more pressure on the top limb and less on the bottom. That timing can change. That does change your timing. Um, it, it, you know, at the release, it does something wonky. It takes a while for the sweep of these limbs to kind of self-correct, I guess, and get everything going in, in the right direction, making sure that uh, the arrow flight is good. Now, the length of bow you have <coughs> is going to matter. So. We got two here, get it all in frame here. We've got a 56 inch long bow and a 66 inch long bow. I don't know if you can tell the difference. These are both on the ground right here. See how tall they are? The height difference. We got a camera, we got a video coming up over here. Sorry, it's the, it's the park workers over here. They're uh, maintaining the grounds. They're kind of looking at me like, who's this idiot making a video? Anyway, so the shorter the limbs, the more chance you have and the easier it is to torque or get those limb tips out of line instead of going back and forth together. Again, just like cam timing. The longer the bow, the less severe the string angle and the less severe the string angle, the less influence you're gonna have for getting those limbs out of time. So this is a 66 inch bow. 
I'm gonna do the same thing here. Now, you're not gonna be able to see the difference on a video, okay? So just gonna have to take my word for it. These things are really hard to convey. Like, look, like, my, we're, we're, these aren't drastic differences. They're very little minute, but they make a big difference on Aeroflight. So same thing, right? I mean, if we're, I don't even know if I can get the whole bow without canting it here, but you know, same thing, right? See how if I put a lot of upper pressure, uh, probably, it probably looks the same on the video. Honestly, it probably does. So it's, it's not going to work out too well to, to demonstrate that. But I mean, these are, it's, it's just physics. You've got a longer string. Your string angle is going to be less, right? With a longer bow. With a shorter bow for the same draw, your string angle, but this is exaggerated, say it's like this, you know, at full draw, right? Say it's like this. Well, with a longer bow, it's like that. So the less you have that, then you know, the, the, the less influence you have on um, how far off uh, timing, limb timing, there's, there's going to be. So tiller, basically your tiller is going to be not affected as, as bad or as severely with a longer bow. That's one of the reasons that a longer bow um, is more stable for more people. It shoots a little smoother for people. Um, it's inherent, I won't say inherently, but there's characteristics that tend to make it more accurate for, for a lot of people because of that also you know with longbow limbs right um this is kind of like an aside but you know you got an asl here which only has like kind of one curve right so they're just going in a straight line where if you've got you know a recurve or like a reflex deflex limb like these right like these limbs here better show them to you better here right you've got kind of multiple curves they look beautiful but they're also probably easier to you know to, to, to kind of get out there, there's more curves basically to to, to, to get out of tune to get out of line with one another instead of just one straight throw even though the, you know, even though it is a long bow and with the recurve too obviously you know you're gonna have the recurve limb tip you know it's doing its thing and then the uh, uh, the, the, the the deflex part over here it's doing its thing so um, yeah it's just it's just gonna be different for every bow but anyway the point is finger pressure is important I'll show you that again finger pressure is important. So if you kind of look at this slim, I'm obviously not a full draw, right? I mean, look how much that, that string moves. Okay, that's me probably a better shot right there. See that, a lot of bottom pressure, which is what I tend to do, unfortunately, versus top pressure, okay? Just imagine what it's doing to those limb tips. All right, so that's it. Um, Nothing more to say about that. It's just something you got to practice. You got to practice a lot. Make sure your release is nice and clean uh, and you're going to clean up a lot of arrow flight. For those of you guys trying to do bear shaft tuning or paper tuning and all that stuff, this stuff needs to be handled. It needs to be done correctly before you move on to bear shaft tuning because bear shaft tuning isn't going to do you any good if your release is crap or if you've got timing issues because you're inducing timing issues into the limbs. Uh, it's just going to be all for naught. So learn you know learn form learn a shoot get a good cl good clean release and then you can move on to the finer points of tuning like bear shaft tuning and things like that so anyway uh season started for us here in uh, minnesota i got to work today so this is kind of like an early morning uh, uh video i hope you guys are uh, having success and uh i'll see you guys next time leave some comments let me know how your release goes all right thanks for watching